I'm going to do a deep dive into human anatomy, the nerve pathway, the muscles, ways that the sciatic nerve can get pinched. We're also going to talk about what is true sciatica and what actually might feel like sciatica, nerve pain down your legs and refer to radicular pain, but is not actually sciatica. And it's probably more common than sciatica is called radiculopathy. So we're going to talk about what radiculopathy is and uh, where that nerve can get impinged versus uh, sciatica. So this image is one of the best images I've seen of just the portrayal of what sciatica might look like. The feeling of sciatica is electrical type feelings. It can be uh, tingling, it could be numbness, it could be burning, it could even be cold. It has a very wide range of symptoms and feelings, um, and it's going to be commonly in your buttocks, back of your thigh, back of your knee, down your calf, even into the foot. And so, and there's really no limit to where it can go down your leg, how far it can go. The only thing that definitely can't happen is the symptoms of the nerve impingement can't go higher than where the impingement is. So if the impingement is happening, say in your buttocks, you could get symptoms in your buttocks or all the way down into your foot, but it wouldn't go higher up into your back or into your neck or your shoulders. Symptoms can only go down farther away from down the path of the nerve, so farther away from where it's getting pinched. I have permission from 3D Organon to use their product uh, to show a beautiful imagery of the human body. So it gets pretty complex when we zoom in. So the first thing I just want to do is show you kind of a more simplified version of the sciatic nerve. And so from the back of the body, it's th this big, huge nerve here. It has a pathway and um, it starts up in the spine and it comes through the back of the pelvis and down the leg and um, so that's how it can send some symptoms down the leg because that's its pathway what actually is sciatica so sciatica is when this sciatic nerve this one right here gets pinched but the sciatic nerve only forms right about here when all these nerves come together that's when it starts getting called the sciatic nerve and so the nerve in pink is the one that and we're talking about in question and it goes down the leg and then it splits off into two other nerves which the symptoms can transfer into as you go down the leg and so we can zoom in here and see the split off fibular tibia and then there's also a smaller nerve called the sural nerve. And so you can see the pathway of these nerves just pretty much covers the entire leg and foot. And you could just see how you could get symptoms in your heel or in your toes. And that would be potentially from an impingement that happened all the way up this nerve pathway. Maybe it got pinched somewhere in the buttocks. Uh, maybe it got pinched by the piriformis muscle, as you can see that it has a pathway right between this muscle and the pelvis. So if this muscle were really tight, that's a really common place where the sciatic nerve can get pinched. That is one very common area. Another very common area is right here up against this bone right here in the back of the pelvis. And that's because the hamstring muscles run right over this area too. Here's the hamstrings uh, running right over that nerve where that attachment on that bone is. So tightness right here could press it up against that bone. That would be true sciatica. Another muscle group right in this region are the glutes. So there's the glutes running right over the top of this area of the body. So glute hypertonicity or just chronic tightness in the glutes can do that. So these would all be true cases of sciatica. There is something more common than sciatica that we might incorrectly think is sciatica, but it's technically not. The sciatic nerve doesn't start until right around here where all these nerves come together. These nerves like this are actually not the sciatic nerve, 
but they can get pinched in the spine. And that's how sciatica can be related to back pain. So we have a disc here, we have the vertebrae here, and we have these nerves coming out of the spinal cord. And these nerves are spinal nerves. This, if this were L5, this would be the L5 spinal nerve root. And that can get compressed by a disc that presses into the nerve. It can get compressed by a bone spur that grows on the vertebrae and presses on the nerve. It can get compressed by stenosis. If the space between the vertebrae gets decreased by postural reasons, uh, that can compress the nerve. There are a lot of ways that a nerve can get compressed in and around the, the spine and the vertebrae. There's so many opportunities for that to happen and it's extremely common. And this is not true sciatica. This is technically called radiculopathy and radiculopathy is defined by nerve root compression. So we have all these nerves coming out of the spinal cord and they are nerve roots. They are the things that get compressed. And it's not until they come together to form the sciatic nerve that true sciatica could possibly happen. So if the nerve gets pinched farther down, maybe in the buttocks, that's true sciatic. The sciatic nerve is the one getting pinched. That's not to say we can't use sciatica as a common term to describe pain that's going down the leg. It's something that could benefit you to learn the anatomy. If I'm feeling these symptoms in my body, you know, it really can be beneficial to help me to solve the problem if I know the anatomy. And why also is really helpful to know that potentially if my pain is in my calf or in my foot, that actually it could be coming from my spine. The symptoms are not typically in the location where the problem is happening. But what we can know for certain is if the symptoms are up higher, say you're having symptoms in your back. Let's see if we can just have, you know, general symptoms. I don't know, or in your buttocks in this region, we know for certain that the impingement would not be happening down in the back of your knee. There's another possibility where our nerves can get compressed. So this, the impingement would have to be happening at the level, maybe at the piriformis. We can follow this up and then to, to try and follow this pathway. Maybe it could be happening in here or it could be happening up above, maybe in the vertebrae here. And you can see this is a really good view here where you can see how all these nerves are exiting and um, they can get compressed. Here's a intervertebral disc. If that disc were to herniate and press on this nerve, this is the L5 nerve root, and this is one of the roots that feeds into the sciatic nerve. So if this nerve root was getting compressed by this disc here, it would not be sciatica. It would be radiculopathy. And so this begs the question, how do we treat sciatica? What do we do? So if you have symptoms, nerve symptoms in your leg. First thing you want to do is try to identify where that could be coming from. If it's associated with also with lower back pain, that is a really big sign to you that the impingement is highly likely coming from your lower back. It wouldn't be true sciatica. It would be radiculopathy. And we can consider the various causes that could be causing that impingement and then start to treat them. And at the end of the day, if it is coming from your lower back, all these different causes that I mentioned from herniated disc, bulging disc, spondylolisthesis, stenosis, bone spurs, you wouldn't really treat these differently if you have sciatica from any of these symptoms. It's not going to change the way that you approach them. The impingement is likely due to a lack of support for your spine.
So no matter what, your approach is going to want to be to improve the support for your spine. And that's going to have something to do with your core at the very least. And that'll give you at least a really direct pathway to go towards to improve the support for your spine. Core balance training is one solution for that. You've got to find a solution that addresses your core so that you can improve the support for your spine. Now, if you determine, well, I don't have any lower back pain, I have symptoms in my buttocks, and there's a possibility that the pain, the impingement could be happening at my piriformis, that would slightly change your approach. And you're gonna wanna be addressing more the hip because the piriformis is a hip muscle and improving the function of your hip, the strength and mobility of your hip muscles so that piriformis can probably learn how to relax and let go so that it's not compressing that piriformis muscle. So it starts with a bunch of questions and the, the answers to those questions give you a more specific path to go down and guide you towards your answer. So hopefully that's helpful for you. You're having a lot of pain in the front of your thigh around the hip flexor area. What if there is some kind of nerve compression happening in the spine? Other nerves too come from the spine and go to other areas of the body. So check this nerve out. The femoral nerve goes to the front of the thigh. It branches out all these other nerves. This is the front of the body now. Branches out all these other nerves in the front of the thigh that could radiate pain into these areas of the body. It's originating in the lumbar spine. You can see it's going right in there. Look at that L2 spinal nerve leading into that uh, femoral nerve and L3 also. This is the femoral nerve right here, right next to a hip flexor. So learning the anatomy of the body is a helpful thing for trying to figure out what's going on. And you've got to understand your problem you got to understand your pain to take the first big step towards trying to solve that pain we do suffer from repetitive trauma and so if anything is too similar to the repetitive trauma that you experience in your life it doesn't matter what exercise it is it could be an exercise that's really good for most people but if that exercise is too similar to the repetitive trauma that you're experiencing in your life causing the problem then it's not going to work for you. And you're going to want to do something different, maybe drastically different, maybe the opposite. Your body will tell you as you get more in tune with it and you're learning whatever it is those things are that are helping it, it's also going to give you more insight. You're going to be able to feel more the things that are hurting it. And so I just highly recommend continuing to build your body wisdom and identify what those things are and do more of what's helping and less of what's hurting. And that is, the recipe for almost pretty much guaranteed progress more of what's helping less of what's hurting but you have to develop that body wisdom that listening to your body that skill hopefully that gives you just a little bit of help on your journey and uh, i appreciate you and until next week uh, get down on that floor and connect to your core